Hello, hello, everybody. Hope you're having a beautiful morning, evening, night, whenever you're watching this video. So she just released this maybe a day ago. I know I said I had a few videos I had to catch up on. I did already watch one of them on my own. Yes, I did. But I still have like, besides this one, I still have like four more to catch up on. So I am jumping quite a bit ahead to the most recent one. And tell me why I was just watching the her new video of like, who the F did I marry? That whole TikTok thing. I was just watching it on my phone. Decided to catch up on some true crime instead. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna jump into the um, parasite actor found dead after two women blackmailed him and 19 hour police interrogation. Listen, um, this could get really deep. Um, potentially not really controversial. I don't know. I have a feeling I'm going to get really, really upset. So let's just go. Bada bing, bada boom. In a prison cell in South Korea, there's these two very pretty, very young girls sitting at the edge of their prison beds. They're in the same cell and they're either going to be very friendly or they're going to rip each other apart by the end of this. There's going to be no middle ground here. So they start feeling each other out. And how old are you? I'm 95. You? Side note, in Korea, usually when someone asks you for your age, you give them the year of your birth first. It's it's interesting, but 95 meaning 1995. So by this point, she would have been what? Maybe 24, 25 when they met? Mm -hmm. So interesting. Isn't that like more math you have to do? Yeah. yeah. I guess they don't really care how old you are. They want to know if you're older and how many years in relation. Mm -hmm. But then when you give birthdays and dates, it gets confusing, right? Yeah, okay, so the, all they care about the seniority. Like, exactly. My... So if seniority. you're both 95, then the next question would be what month? Mm -hmm. And then it's very quick to decide who's older. The other girl goes, I'm 91, so that means I'm four years older than you. I'm your only, I guess, which is like an older sister. Mm -hmm. So what are you in here for? Fraud? You? Drugs. These two girls, Nami and SJ, would smile at each other because this was good. This was very good. They got to planning. They promised each other once they got out, they would get apartments in the same building, just a few floors apart, so that they could always be together. They felt a friendship that was developing. And while they're planning their futures out together, on the other side of the world, Parasite was winning an Academy Award for Best Picture. Standing on stage, feeling on top of the world, would be Lee Sung Yoon. He was an A-list actor in South Korea already, but this is like a new height of his career, mm -hmm. a new height of fame. He's internationally known now. Internationally. But in less than four years, he would end up dead, and these two girls from prison would have something to do with it. I was planning on taking notes, but I think I might just pause and give my thoughts then and there. <sighs> Let's go. <laughs> We would like to thank today's sponsors who have made it possible for Rotten Mango to support the Jed Foundation, a nonprofit that protects emotional health and prevents suicides for our nation's teens and young adults by giving them the skills and supports that they need to thrive today, but also tomorrow. This episode's partnerships have also made it possible to support Rotten Mango's growing team of dedicated researchers and translators. We'd also like to thank you guys for your continued support as we work on our mission to be worthy advocates of these causes. Now, as always, full show notes are available at RottenMangoPodcast.com. We did have our Korean translators and researchers assist on this case, but I will say that there is there's a lot going on and there's a lot of other people involved, conspiracies about why this became such an overblown investigation. There's differing sources on the exact timeline of events. We try to gather all the accurate facts of the case and compile them in an easy to digest format for you whilst we try our best to remain neutral. But if there is anything at all that is lost in translation, miscommunicated, or even anything additional that you would like us to know about this case, please let us know down in the comments. And a quick content warning, there is brief mention of suicide in this episode. So if that is something that might bring you to a dark place today, please just take it easy, skip this one, go watch a comfort show, and stay safe. I'm in a good space So with space that being right said, now. let's get started. Let's go. Nami had been out of prison for a while, and everything was working out relatively like she had planned. She's living in the same apartment complex as her best friend, Estre, that she met in prison. She's running her own business that's doing really well. And then, boom, a text message comes in, ready to ruin everything for Nami. 
An unknown profile on Telegram messages her. The user's name is Nenem Thin. Nami has never heard of this username. She has no idea who this is. This person isn't even in her contacts. It's a total stranger. She goes to open the message and it reads, the stuff on your photo albums. What is this person even talking about? So she texts back, what about my photo albums? A lot of fucking celebrity photos, enough to make the nation flip shit, huh? Whoever this person was, they knew exactly what kind of line of work that Nami was in. So she quickly texts back, unfazed. My goodness, I didn't know we were still living in the past era. I'm feeling under the weather, so I'm just going to head to sleep now. What an odd exchange. Like, who the hell is this Very person? Odd. Nami's trying so hard to play it cool, but it is bothering her. She immediately screenshots all of the text messages and sends them to her best friend, SJ. And the both of them, they go into detective mode. They're trying to investigate. But this is an account from Telegram, which is anonymous. They have nothing to go off of, but maybe the blackmailer's username texting cadence, any hints in the messages themselves, which are basically none. They barely exchanged messages so far. So let's start with the name. SJ the friend immediately screenshots something and sends it to Nami. It's a package of instant noodles, which is like a cold, spicy stir fried noodle, but the mm. brand calls that noodle it's a household brand in South Korea. So this is just a food brand? Yeah, okay. so I guess it would be the same as someone's username being SpaghettiOs. Spaghetti it's a brand ends. by Chef Boyardee. Like, that's yeah, the name yeah. of their product. Yeah. But it's technically, I mean, and I don't know if you would call it spaghetti, but you get the idea. It's very brand specific. So SJ sends Nami a screenshot of the noodle packaging, and she says, Nami, young people these days call Pibimyeon by the brand's name instead. So a young Do you think person. this person messaging you is... And Nami's like, I know exactly who it is. Oh, precisely. Okay. It's Chung Dan. So this case is actually has a lot of very random, bizarre people involved. One of them being Chung Ta Eun. That's their name. Ta Eun. Ta Eun is kind of famous. They're an Arjang contestant winner. Arjang is literally translates to best face. Like Ar is Ar <laughs> face. Ar. And then Jang is like the best. So they would have these reality shows, contestant shows, contest shows, where they would bring in the best faces from the nation and just basically whoever has the ideal face wins the contest. That's crazy. Like a beauty contest. I'm not surprised though. Yes, but it's very face specific. Very it's not superficial. You don't really like answer questions. You don't do the bikini shows. It's all about your face. Is it like a really prestige title or is it yeah. more like a, a prestige oh, like a title award. well i wouldn't say it's like congrats America, on your face but it is um it's very it's a high compliment to be called an art town but it's not really something that you have to win through that competition it's you could call anyone on the internet an art town it's a compliment basically. yes and they have a very specific look it's like that perfect face look like i would say maybe karina from aespa is the best comparison like that is the it look. And Taun got famous for having a good face. And eventually using that fame, Taun would start working in the music industry. But probably what they're the most known for is dating Han Seo-yi. She's going to become oh. very important in this. She is probably one of the most controversial K-pop trainees to ever exist. She's been involved in almost every major K-pop idol scandal. The two of them briefly dated, then had a very public and messy breakup where they both accused each other of being physically violent and abusive. So, side note about Han Choi, she was involved in Big Bang Top's wheat scandal that happened in like 2011 so she's just kind of involved in all the drama yeah i don't really Any get into drama, her she's in there somehow now after this breakup between like she's, Hanzai, she's gonna get a question later and tong dalen they all run in the same circle still so they all hang out with the same people even after they broke up okay and they hang out with nami and sj Taun also has a criminal history stemming from selling drugs on Telegram. And this is where the dots start connecting some more. Taun's Telegram username used to be Japageti, which is a brand of black bean noodle. Right. So black bean noodle is the dish. But Japageti is a very specific noodle brand's version of that dish. And they call it Japageti. Mm -hmm. It's not even black bean noodles. It's the brand's name for it. Just as how Nenimtin is not spicy cold noodles. Mm -hmm. It's the brand's name for right. it. So that's how she made a connection because yes. she always uses brand's name as her name. 
And Talon is younger than them in early 20s. So they're like, okay, young people call PV Myon Nenenting, you know, which older people don't really do that. They also really like to use these brand names for food as their username. And on top of that, the two girls remember that Talon also had a bit of coding experience. So to them, everything is clicking, everything is making sense. Talon did this. Talon hacked into Nami's book. Let's pause. So he's a certified hacker. What a loser. <laughs> I can move better than yesterday, so I'm going to go to the OBGYN and go to the hair salon, dye my hair black. Miss P, okay, screenshot, what is this again? Should I read or not? Okay, I think it's John, block T, seems like she did something during investigation. How does she know your number? Photo album and got all the pictures of the celebrities and is now blackmailing her because Talon is the blackmailer. Whoever the spicy cold noodles were, though, they're just getting started. They text Nami some more. You've been ignoring my text when I see that you've clearly read it. Ugh, so annoying. Okay. <laughs> hey, Kay, why are you online if you said you were sleeping? Anyways, lying through your teeth. How many people did you tell that you got contact from me? You sent messages for two hours and got answers. Told your story to 13 people. How many people did you show after capturing? And then no, you thought my words were even after you read it. Okay. I'll go straight to get the ready to get instead. effed up. Get what? Ready to get effed. Another text. Make $75,000 by Wednesday, and I'll add in another $8,000 for each day that you're late. I'm not going to ask for more after this. I'm not some sort of gangster. Get all the cash that I want by Wednesday and put it in the fire hydrant in front of your house. Excuse me? Listen to me. Unless you want to ruin everything for everybody else, don't fuck up everyone else's life. Just fuck up your own. Audio files, videos, photos, I have it all. Your whole place, your whole business, it's going down. So he's got some dirt. The blackmailer starts listing off a little bit of what they know. Just a little taste of what's about to come. And this has been redacted from the reports. Of course. Redacted. Abuse of power. Redacted. Drug trafficking. Redacted. Drugs. Each one of those redacted names were high-powered people and or celebrities. The last one on that list was an A-list actor in South Korea, internationally acclaimed by playing the rich father from Oscar-winning film Family Man, Lee Sung Yoon. The blackmailer texted Nami, Tomorrow, I'm going to start with Lee, so be careful. If you ever see your husband has a strange charge on his card every Friday night for a bakery that you've never even been to before, and you guys are in South Korea, you might want to look into that. There are establishments okay. called room salons, and they can fake receipts to look like bakery receipts, snack shop receipts, or other small business receipts. But in reality, they're just hostess bars. And Nami was a madam at one of these entertainment establishments. So in Japan, they're hostess bars. In Korea, they're kind of called room salons. There's a little bit of overlap. There's a oh, lot of similarity, okay. but there's some differing points. They're like fancy karaoke bars in Korea with private rooms. So the sole purpose is entertaining men. They remind me, again, quite a bit of the Japanese hostess clubs right. in the sense that you walk in, you get escorted into a private mm -hmm. room. Most rooms have the karaoke set up so you can sing or you can pick hostesses to sing and spend time with you. And a big part of it is de-stressing from this corporate world while you're having someone tending to you and boosting your ego. Right. But that part is the same. But Korean room salons have a few slight differences. Like the fact that they have a pretty, most of them have a pretty strict no phones rule in the rooms. No phones, which makes everything feel just a bit more intimate, just a bit more private. And Korean room salons, they focus heavily on exclusivity and status symbols. Some clubs, they won't even let you in. You walk in, you're like, I've got $10,000 that I want to blow right now. They're like, sorry, sir, you're not a member. So you can't. And in Korea, if you ever hear something called Ita and Ita, this is what they're referring to. There's two tiers to room salons. Ita is when you're on the premises, when you're in the club or in the room salon. You can usually flirt, get that emotional connection. Sometimes you could probably fondle the room salon girls, depending on the room salon, okay. right? depending on the establishment. And then there's something called Ita, which is level two, second tier. This means that after the room salon date, you go out, usually off the premises, and you go full intimacy. 
these room salons, they can get really pricey. If you're going to go to a really nice, luxurious one in the center of Gangnam, you can expect to pay around $500 to $1,500 per person Sheesh. per night. Yeah, it's insane. You have to pay for the room fee, then the food and the drinks. Then you have to tip the hostesses. And then there's different leagues of salons. There's a ranking system for the girls at these types of clubs. So you've got the Puchandong style. Now, this style is very overtly sometimes the girls you walk in they're just wearing their undergarments then you have the club girls they're a bit more clothed than just their undergarments but it's like the next tier up then you get higher up then you have the 15 percent this means 15 percent of the top prettiest girls in room salons they call it like a 15 percent club wow. which means you have a certain league of aesthetics in the girls there very attractive they probably will not tolerate touching inside of the store then you have the TPs, the 10 pro, which means 10%. 10 pro, yeah. So girls, they look like celebrities. They're usually very educated. And if you're filthy rich, you could even sponsor one of the girls to be like, I don't know, your girlfriend, your side girlfriend. Now, side note, it does seem like a few celebrities have been seen frequenting these room salons. And I know it's a really controversial topic, but some netizens say that there might be a reason why celebrities might like these room salons more than the average civilian. Okay. The no phones rule, that might ease some of their anxiety sure. of always feeling like they're going to be filmed by other people when they're in establishments, that other parties, not even in the room that they're in, are filming them. Like, they're just trying to have fun, right? And perhaps to some of the older generations of celebrities, it's purely just habit. Apparently back then, if you wanted to land a role in a movie, you would have to shake hands with the director in a room salon. Uh, completely not surprised. <laughs> I wish I can be surprised with this type of stuff, but I've been so overexposed against my will. Well, no, because I voluntarily watch Stephanie's videos and whatnot. But <laughs> yeah, I'm not surprised by any of this stuff at all. And yeah, it just really shows a little bit of culture difference. Well, I guess maybe some similarities depending on how conservative you are as a person, but I don't really find it surprising, like I said, that celebrities do go to these types of establishments to get that type of It was of so prevalent that when a new service. up and coming director came out and started his own production company, he was this close to naming it NRS. What's up? No room salons because he hated it so much. He was like, this is a part of the industry that I wish would just die off. I hate it. Like, that's how strong and prevalent it was. So it is very deep rooted in the... The celebrity culture. Yeah, okay. Like, I think it starts when you don't really have a choice. You just have to go. Mm -hmm. And the one in question today is dubbed a 1% room salon in Gangnam, meaning they only offer memberships. You cannot step in there and book a private room unless you're a member, even if you have the money, which adds to the exclusivity and the discretion of the business. Only the top 1% can afford this room salon. And it's speculated that a few hours in this type of club with three to four people in a private room, that's about six to $8,000. And because of how expensive the barrier of entry is, less people would go. And it might honestly make a great place for celebrities to feel like they're getting away. I'm not recommending it. I'm not saying that they should, sure. but yeah. I can maybe kind of see why. I, the yeah, barrier for same. entry is so high. Maybe it feels like it's more secretive and not many people are going to out you and talk about it and post it. Like Unless one of the workers there really just wants to, just has some really bad intentions. I mean, we've seen that outplay various times also. Like little sneaky pictures of you online and you can finally just have some fun. Nami runs one of those, a 1% club in Gangnam. But there's a give and take in place for room salon madams and their high profile customers. I don't want to say clientele because that makes it sound like they're buying intimacy, right? That's not what I'm insinuating at all. But just, you know, customers, pat patrons of an establishment. Yeah. Discretion. You get paid to not talk about what you see. Once that trust is broken, nobody's going to want to visit Nami's business ever again. And this blackmailer is going to ruin her entire career. Even oh. if Nami gives the blackmailer the money, who's to say that they're going to stop there? What if they keep going? What if they keep coming back for more money? It's never going to end. Ding! Another message from the Noodle Telegram account comes in. Do as I say, unless you want to ruin someone else's life. I don't think you know the situation that you're in right now. If you ignore me again today, I'm going to reach out to your mom. 
Nami sent more screenshots of these conversations to SJ, her best friend. And SJ is just trying to warn Nami, like, don't piss off the hackers. Don't piss off the blackmailers. Just figure out what exactly they know, like what in your photo albums. She texts, don't turn them all into enemies, Nami. Nami's hot-headed though. She texts back, yeah, well, I'm not gonna give them a freaking penny. Just, just find out what they have on you first. Hear them out. SJ tries to comfort her best friend, Nami. I mean, even if they know you're doing drugs, they can't touch any of your celebrity friends like Lee sung Gyun, you know, the parasite actor. How are they going to touch him? Yeah, I guess that's true. But it's... I had an idea. Should I just tell Lee sung Gyun, Lee, just tell him that I've been hacked and that I'm being blackmailed into giving them $500,000? So you're going to use him Wait, to give so you the money? she's about to blackmail the actor. Yeah. While being blackmailed. She's being blackmailed for $75,000. And she's going to go turn around to the parasite actor and say, Hey, Lee, I need $500,000. Otherwise, people at the press are going to know that we hang out. Do you want to be seen with the madam of a room salon? That's crazy. When you have a wife and two children? Is that what you want? So Nami has this brilliant idea of playing both sides. She would lie to the blackmailer and get money from Lee. Then she would lie to Lee and say that she was going to give the money to the blackmailer, but neither of those things were going to happen. It's not even like she wants to take the 500k, give 75k to the blackmailer, and then keep the rest. She wants to keep it all. She's like, I'm just going to screw both of them, because whatever. Wow. Uh... Yeah. She shares her bright idea with her best friend SJ, and she texts, I'm just going to play Lee. Should I do this? No, no, you idiot. Because Nami, if you don't give money to the blackmailer, what happens to Leopa, who actually gave you the money? She doesn't and Nami care. Just responds, oh, well, he'll just be a fucking R word. Nami starts texting Lee Sung Yoon, Lee, stating that she's being blackmailed and her phone was hacked and the press is going to find out that he's basically having an affair with her, if you will. He has an actress wife that he's been with for over a decade. So much of his image in the public arena is being part of the perfect family. They're kind of the it couple. They're like a middle-aged but it couple. They're both at their prime. I mean, they share two beautiful children together. But now, now the blackmailer knows that Lee, the perfect family man, has been spending some time with Nami, the madam of a room salon, in her private residence. And for that information, Nami's like, okay, you know what? Opa, I negotiated and I got it down from 500000 to 250000 So I'm going to need 250000 Nami starts texting Lee. Okay, Opa, I have to make a choice now. First things first, Opa, you need to live. Even if something happens to me, you have to live. That's why I'm telling you all these things about what's going on when it would be better for me if I don't tell you. I asked around and there's a lot of people who have lost everything because they didn't comply with these types of threats from blackmailers. If we ignore this person and they go to the media about this, you and me, we're all done for. Like not saying this relationship is done for, but she's insinuating our mm -hmm. lives, our careers are done for. Just trust me this once and comply with the demands of $250,000 and I will make sure nothing incriminating about you gets out. I'm going to turn myself in today for questioning because they're saying that they're going to go to the police about my drug reports. Do you think that they're going to run forensics on my phone? Nami continues trying to get $250,000 out of Lee. Also, those people will not come back once we give them the $250,000. They told me that they have no reason to come back and ask for more money. But right now, if I ignore them and you ignore them, I mean, it could go to the press. Then at that point, both of our lives would be over. And like, I mean, just trust me. I'm going to take care of this situation so cleanly. Just trust me. Nami tries to soften the situation by saying things like, Sai, the world really has gone crazy these days. Cry face. Don't worry too much, though. Lee texts back, okay. She texts, I'll call you later during the day. Life is so hard. Are you available to talk during the day? I'll call you later. Lee gets her the money, $250,000 in cash, but he was very clearly hesitant. You can tell from the text messages. He doesn't know if he's this is the route short. that he wants to take. So he's not like, oh yeah, give it, take the money. We got to make sure this never gets out. He's just kind of like confused and he doesn't understand really what's the best choice at that moment. It's alleged that Lee had to go to a close friend of his, Mr. Kim, who also knows Nami, to get a loan from him for the money.
because Lee's wife has access to their bank accounts. And if a quarter million dollars just goes missing, I mean, it's going to be a big deal. The cash gets delivered to Nami, who promises Lee that she's going to give it to the blackmailer, who will then shut up about the whole thing and they'll be over it. But instead, Nami takes the money and goes on the run. She stops responding to everyone. She ghosts everyone. The blackmailer, Lee, even SJ, her best friend. She ghosts them all for $250,000. Trash. And so now Trash. the blackmailer is pissed. And the blackmailer is coming after SJ, sending messages. Nenemtin is reaching out to SJ on Telegram, Nami's best friend, threatening to ruin SJ's life unless you can get your best friend Nami to come back with my money. SJ starts sending desperate messages to Nami. Where are you, Nami? This is insane. You can't do this to me. I'm never going to see you again. Don't ever talk to me ever again if this is how you're going to be. Don't even reach out. Nami finally responds. I'll call you soon. Call me before noon today. Noon comes and passes. SJ texts again. Are you calling me soon, Nami? Please help me understand, because if this is what I think it is, I will forever disappear from your life. I think the cops are trying to come to my house. I have to verify it's the cops, but I don't know. I don't know. So please, Nen and Ding keeps contacting me. If they reach out to me one more time, I'm going to report them to the police. Don't try to get me to understand your side then. Do it now. If not, I never want to see you again, ever. She would have been cut off. Stop contacting my friends and acquaintances asking where I am. And I'm sorry. I wronged you in all of this, okay? I'm sorry. Because now it's on SJ. Now the pressure is on SJ. Get me my money. So she really just, Nami took 250K and that's it? Yeah. That's that's her exit? Yeah. Of course. SJ texts her, yeah, well, don't worry. I will have no reason to ever reach out to you again. Nami says, let me just clean this up, okay? Let me clean up the mess and then I'll reach out to you. Don't forget to eat. Like, it's like a... Don't forget to, like, don't skip meals. It's a very enduring term, which is bizarre in this moment. But how is SJ just going to wait for Nami to clean this mess up when SJ's life is on the line too? SJ and a man by the name of Samuel walk into the Incheon Police Department with 30 pieces of black hair and a clear baggie and a very bizarre story. I'd like to report a drug crime. Samuel, the man that's accompanying SJ, tells the police that his girlfriend got a job at a room salon and the manager there, the madam, if you will, got her intentionally hooked on drugs. He said that he did absolutely everything to get her off these drugs, but she just wouldn't quit. So he suspected the madam is keeping her addicted for the purpose of the business. Because he can't convince his own girlfriend to get off the drugs, he decided to go to the source of the drugs. He goes to the madam of the business and tells her, hey, if you don't quit supplying my girlfriend with drugs, I'm going to report you to the police. Mm-hmm. He was so shocked because she just sat there and said, how much money do you want? That was not what he was after. He doesn't want money. He just wants his girlfriend to be safe. And the police are like, okay, kind of a wild story. Um, What happened? Why is Stephanie's eyes <laughs> shut? Oh no, I'll be back. Okay, uh, hopefully I got it fixed. But something feels so off about this whole thing. This whole interaction blackmail situation, it feels, it doesn't feel like how a interaction like this would naturally go. It feels a little uh, sketchy almost, like... I don't know how to explain it. It just doesn't feel like how I said a normal situation like this would naturally go. I feel like someone's lying here. He just wants his girlfriend to be safe. The police are like, okay, kind of a wild story. So what is SJ doing here? SJ hands over the bag of hairs. This is Nami's best friend. She hands over screenshots of text messages. The woman that got Samuel's girlfriend hooked on drugs is my best friend, Nami. She's the madam of a very famous room salon, and she provides drugs for celebrities. SJ was so annoyed at Nami for leaving her like that. But also, SJ was so mad at Nami, mainly for not giving her her share. All SJ wanted was $75,000. There, Nami got $250,000 and left. Now what? All that work creating a blackmail account, I mean, it can't go to waste, right? What did I... I... It was the best friend who was behind it. I was saying right then 
how it just doesn't feel like it's playing out the way that it would a way that the way that it would in any other situation it feels sketchy someone's lying here and it was sj <laughs> uh <laughs> sj did it all sj is the original blackmailer of course what yeah because Nami of course would all these wild stories and send her pictures of all the celebrities that she would meet at her room salon and now sj is like oh you know what i need some money so i'm gonna blackmail my best friend <laughs> this is crazy yeah and nami has no idea no i'm just She's not by faced now, by it right now, no she thinks it's town <laughs> but they're dope, both so fucked up too the level of both. evilness just keep on going i'm yeah. not one surprised crime, they follow up with another with something even worse and worse and worse it's like they're willing to commit the crimes but they're also willing to do it to the people that they're supposed to love the most and like be the closest there's to. no really loyalty bizarre. they have no moral standing and right. a lot of medicines argue which one is worse between they're, the two it's no competition it's really hard to decide throw them it's both. Just both so uniquely evil it's just so bizarre so now, after reporting Nami, SJ texts Mr. Kim. Again, this is the Parasite actor's close friend, the one that also knows Nami. And he's also the one that loaned the cash. Remember? Oh, yeah, yeah, Mr. Kim. Yes. So SJ contacted Mystic, Mr. Yes. Kim. Yes. Mr. Kim already gave $250,000 to Nami. Yes. SJ reaches out to him, trying to get more money out of him because Nami ran away. SJ basically reaches out and is like, hi, I'm the original blackmailer. Nami took the freaking money and ran, so I'm going to need you guys to give me my cut. Pay me my money. I never got paid, so the blackmail threats are still active. But Mr. Kim just responds to Nenem Tin. There's no response from our side because giving more money, I mean, it seems like this side has given up. Like, we've given up. Do you really think that we will believe that this will ever end? Even if you say this is it it's... and that Nami took the rest of the money and ran. Honestly, I don't know. We don't know what to believe. And I'm just in the middle trying to keep this under wraps. I even sent my own money too. Jeez, I mean, I think the best way to resolve all of this is if we all meet up together, sign some sort of contract. Otherwise, no deal with more money. So he's like, we need to get together and sign some documents if you want any cash at all. Like a document saying that you will never bring this up, like you are bound by, I don't know, an NDA or something, because this is just crazy. You can't just keep asking us for more money. What is an NDA to two trash just like these? <laughs> like if you have that amount of power to tear some people's lives down, what makes you think that signing an NDA is going to stop them from being so malicious and just trying some some pranks like these it's not even pranks they're actually like uh, I... mr kim goes or we can just go the legal route because this is extortion honestly i don't get any of this even with that amount of money 250k nami will last maybe five years so why are we even doing stuff like this right now but SJ is very desperate. She keeps messaging him, almost pitching herself like she's on Shark Tank. Sir, let's do the original agreed upon deal of $75,000. I really need the money and you can see if I will ever threaten you guys ever again, I will disappear with the money. I will stop looking for Nami. If this ever gets out to the world, I will take full responsibility for it because there's really no need for that to get everybody involved. I just really need the money tomorrow, right away. On what grounds is there to trust you though? What have you proven? What actions have you done that leads to people believing that you are trustworthy? Wait, is she telling them that she was the original blackmailer? Yeah, but she's not saying she's SJ. She's messaging them through Nen and the, oh, the Noodle account. I gotcha. Yeah. Now, the messages are written really polite. It's actually kind of odd. She's blackmailing them, but it sounds more like she's a distant relative asking for a loan. But when Mr. Kim doesn't budge and give her what she wants, she fully lashes out. She texts, first of all, I didn't know Nami was going to take the money and run. I didn't know that she was going to eat all the money and can explode. So like, is that really my fault? Mr. Kim says, regardless, I'll have to pass on this deal. Okay, fine. Then I'll continue bothering people around you guys. Besides, today, I will give you a deal. Remember how I was asking for $150,000? Today, let's make it $40,000. How about that? You should probably take the deal with this kind of cut. Try standing in my shoes for once, sir. Try Mr. standing Kim in my shoes. The and the blackmailer tells him that he will send an assistant to grab the money. That assistant is SJ. Yeah. 
So she texts him on her little noodle account, I'm gonna send my assistant to grab the cash from you in the parking lot. And guess who shows up? SJ. What? But Mr. Kim is like, oh, that's probably just the assistant for the blackmailer. Oh, he doesn't know SJ. No. Oh. Yeah. It's like a whole thing. Ultimately, SJ gets $40,000 in cash in the parking lot of a grilled eel restaurant in Gangnam. And just to recap, SJ is the original noodle blackmailer. She was texting Nami about the blackmail threats like she has no idea what's going on. So she's Nami's blackmailer and her best friend giving her advice on mm -hmm. what to do with the blackmailer. Yeah. That's why she's saying like, no, don't play Lee. Like, don't do that. Don't run off with the money. Don't make enemies. Just see what they want. Wow. She ends up getting $40,000 from Lee. Nami, the madam of the business, ends up getting blackmailed, but plays Lee and runs off with $250,000. And it takes about three to four weeks to be issued a passport. Nami was a few days in when she was caught by the police. Police had records that she applied for a passport and a visa planning to flee the country. But flower snakes are known not to travel that fast. That's what people call Nami, a flower snake. Flower snake. A book then. That's what we call them. Okay, so a flower snake is the Korean version of a gold digger, but it's actually a lot right. more scathing than a gold digger. Gold digger is like, okay, I don't know how offended I'd be if I was called a gold digger, but a flower snake, it's such a ruthless term. It's a woman who waits in the gardens, like a little snake near all the beautiful flowers, just waiting for someone close to come by. They slither towards their next victim, seduce them, and then ask them for money in return for their silence. So it's not even someone that wants to date someone with money. It's more so, I'm going to literally sleep with that person, someone that I know shouldn't be sleeping with me, whether it's a married yeah. man, a company executive, someone that would be in trouble if the world found out that they slept with me. And immediately afterwards, I'm going to ask them for money in return for my silence. I see. It's like blackmailing. They're literally blackmailers. I know so much about this stuff. I think it's really telling I used to think that having <laughs> my a interest. In would help me. God, I don't know what is up with the connection between my Wi-Fi and my PC, but it is just malfunctioning here and there. But you know who's going to get the shit end of the stick out of all of this is the actor. Because Korean laws are some of the most ridiculous, mind-numbing, just stupid written... It's just so many instances, even just watching um, Rotten Mango videos like this, you kind of get a little taste of how ridiculous the laws are. So an actor being caught with some drugs versus all the other malicious things that these two girls and probably a whole lot more, I wouldn't be surprised if the in citizens get involved in ruining his life, what they will, they will because they're not going to know the whole story. Law enforcement, I won't be surprised if they get involved in ruining his life and like bullying him. It's just, I feel like it might be a little predictable how this will play out because we've seen so many instances like this play out. They'll give you a full refund within 60 days of purchasing. Simply Safe even covers return shipping. There's really nothing to lose. There are no risks with Simply Safe. She's got Order like these star pimple patches all over. <laughs> she has a blue one, now she has a yellow Don't one. Don't wait. Visit simplysafe.com slash rotten. That's simplysafe.com slash rotten. There's no safe like Simply Safe. October 18th, 2023, the day after SJ reported her, Nami was arrested for suspicion of drug use in her room salon. She was under suspicion of using Phylophon, which it's known as Satan's phlegm, or Satan's mucus in what? South Korea. It's crystal meth. Okay. Side note, this very specific okay. kind was created in Japan during World War II to give soldiers, to make them more stimulated during the war so that they could fight harder and longer. So there's that. It's become a huge recreational drug issue in East Asia now. Fighting like Tsunami was coquettes. arrested, brought in to be questioned. She's drug tested. It comes back positive for psychotropic substances. But that's a huge range. I'm just going to be honest with you. That could include caffeine, nicotine, alcohol, and even certain pain meds. But also heroin, LSD, cocaine, and crystal meth. So there's that. At this point, the police have testimonies from two people that Nami is not only doing drugs, but selling drugs. So from... SJ sure, and Samuel. If you're doing it, you're like, going to yeah, sell she's it. She's selling drugs. She's doing drugs. And South Korea is a country that's super strict on drugs. So Nami is a slam dunk case, right? For the police. But nothing is impressive about catching a flower snake. 
You don't get a pat on the back for catching a flower snake. It's so crazy. Like I said, the the amount of strictness it comes and the amount of punishment from doing drugs. Of course, I'm not endorsing drugs. Okay. Nobody should do drugs. But um, compared to how they get punished by doing more heinous acts, it's just so out of this world. Just... I can't wrap my head around it. If the U.S. had as strict laws with drugs as Korea does, what Hollywood within itself is wiped out. You don't get an award. You don't get a promotion for catching a flower oh, snake. Downtown that LA. Flower snake has six prior drug convictions. Portland. What's so great about the seventh drug conviction? If anything, it's almost insulting. A seventh time, really? You couldn't catch her again, like the seventh time? The police didn't want a flower snake. They wanted to take down a napping alligator in the grass. And the only thing is, you're more likely to be killed from a snake than an alligator, statistically. I believe October it. 19th, 2023, just three hours after Nami's very first interrogation finishes, an exclusive article is published online about an unnamed gigantic A-list actor going by the name of Mr. L that is now part of a huge drug investigation. It's very cryptic. I mean, so cryptic to the point of being uninteresting. Even if we can guess Mr. L stands for Mr. Lee, it could be Mr. Lim, it could even be Mr. Park, who's to say that the L is the first letter of the actor's surname. There, that's still a huge population of people to go through. Yeah. The last name Lee in South Korea is the second most popular after Kim. Super About common. 15% of the population share the last name Lee. Yeah. So who's gonna know who this actor is? But very quickly, almost suspiciously quickly, rumors start spreading online that it's Lee sung -yun. Everyone's confused. How How would anyone know that it's him, especially given the circumstances? Lee sung -yun is not even someone that the general public would assume would do drugs. He's 48. He's got a wife, respected actress of a wife, two children. He doesn't really fit this young club scene. The man just golfs. When he goes on to variety shows, reality shows, all he talks about is his love for his kids and golf. Like he's obsessed with golf. The reporter would eventually come out to state that the police gave them the name, just exposed the fact that Lee was involved in an open drug investigation. And the media ran with it. They dropped article after article after article that Lee was accused of cheating on his wife at a room salon and taking drugs with the girls there. And everybody lost their freaking minds. They went genuinely crazy. Truly the press, they're having a field day. They're calling this the mini burning sun scandal because it had two of the biggest names in the Korean entertainment industry attached to it. Parasite actor Lee sung -yun. That's a crazy comparison, by the way. I know we're going to get more deep into it, but comparing it to The Burning Sun. And G-Dragon of Big Bang. Oof. Originally, G-Dragon would be the bigger focus of the media. Of course. People were going in and overanalyzing every single video of G-Dragon. They were looking for any strange body movements, unfocused eyes, slurred speech, anything that could indicate that he was a drug user. People were saying, oh, well, Top from Big Bang was busted for usage. Seung Lee from Burning Sun, right? And then now, now G-Dragon? We knew it. We knew it all along. Oh, shut up. There's a video of G-Dragon at the airport taken by paparazzi that became one of the trending videos associated with this case. It shows him walking through the airport while paparazzi follow him around taking pictures and videos. And he can't seem to stay still. He's touching his face. He's touching his hair, re readjusting his clothing. He's stretching, which, side note, I saw the video and I do think that he strikes me as maybe a little bit more active with his movements yeah, than he's I not would standing normally still. expect walking through the airport. But there's so much context to this. First of all, we don't know if he has any sort of health condition that could lead to something like that. But also, even if he doesn't, he's a celebrity in South Korea. His every move, his every look, facial expression, breath is going to get analyzed and dissected regardless of a drug scandal or not. And as he's walking through the airport with paparazzi, like it's just so awkward. Nobody's really talking to him. They're just like following him around. I mean, I don't know. I feel like I would maybe move around and fidget and try to change. I would feel insecure. I would yeah, constantly yeah. fix my hair. Maybe I have a scratch and then I would try to adjust my clothing because they're taking pictures and I know these pictures are going to be front page somewhere. Yeah. Right? I mean, I can't imagine that's a pleasant, non-anxious, inducing, soothing experience. But the comments started getting flooded after G-Dragon was revealed to be part of the Room Salon drug investigation. They were ruthless. Netizens wrote, ha so it's true. They say addicts pretend to stretch because they can't keep their bodies still. 
I'd be more surprised if he wasn't on drugs. This guy's a drug addict. Look at him shaking like a dog. Let's pretend we're all surprised, you guys. He really paved the way for criminals. He's the king of the drugs. He really looks like the type to do crime anyway. G-Dragon came out with a statement and basically begged the police to test him. He stated to the public that he would be voluntarily submitting his own urine, hair, fingernail, and toenail samples to be tested for drug usage. This was kind of a pivotal moment in the Korean entertainment industry. A lot of netizens have stated this is this is going to change probably society's perception of these investigations because G-Dragon shows up at the police station with press waiting for him outside the station. This is his very first interrogation, voluntary. He's going to submit all of his samples. They're just, the press, they're foaming at the mouth to get him to do something, say something, get arrested, anything. Get arrested? G-Dragon shows up in a full suit, black glasses, and he does not bow to the press, which is a huge thing for Korean celebrities. If you do not bow to the press, that means you think that you're God or something. How dare you? These are the people that made you famous. This was significant. This was him showing the press that he was not going to get bullied by them. He does not bow. And before he goes in to be questioned by the police, G-Dragon answers a few questions from the press. They ask, why are you making a voluntary appearance for police questioning? He looks at them and he does this between every single question. He looks at them like they're not even the same species. He looks at them like they're insane. They're unhinged. Like, why did you just ask me that? He says, I'll know when I get inside. Do you admit to charges that you've used drugs? I have not committed any crime regarding drugs. I'm appearing for questioning to clarify all allegations made. It's best to answer any questions authorities may have as quickly as possible. So I should probably not prolong these conversations right now. You have rejected the charges against you. Does that mean you think the investigation by the police is unfounded? Even the press question here is so bizarre. It's like they want him to badmouth the police outside the police station and put himself in a situation where the police are going to want to ruin his life even more. G-Dragon looks more bored than anything. And he just states, everything will come to light in due course. <sighs> what is that expression? Then the press start hinting at the idea that G-Dragon dyed his hair to throw off the hair drug test results. When did you dye your hair and do you have hair loss problems? I did not do anything like that. Did you ever frequent the entertainment establishment that's been mentioned? We'll have to see about that. Do you know the establishment's manager or the doctor who's been accused of providing the drugs? No. Can I go now? And do you want to say something to your fans? Which this is the absolute worst time to bring something like this up. I mean, it's just kind of gross. What do you what do you want him to say? He <sighs> wants to prove that he's not guilty by going in there. And this is a police investigation. Like, what do you mean? Do you want to say something to your fans right now? G-Dragon literally takes like a full minute to look at him like he's out of his mind. And he starts smirking and he's just flabbergasted. And he says, don't worry too much. Can I go now? Side note, his body movements are exactly the same here as when he was at the airport. Once G-Dragon gets out of police questioning, he was in there for four hours. Even more press is waiting for him. Of course. He stops to answer questions, and not necessarily because he wants to, but more so as a formality. But the press ask him some very strange things. One of them asks, you claimed innocence before you went in there. Do you still stick by that stance? It, and he's going in voluntarily. Volunteering is... is <laughs> hair nails urine whatever the f else to get tested wouldn't that automatically make you believe that he believes that i mean he knows that he's <laughs> innocent of all rumors rumors also i just because it's not my culture so i can't really fully speak on it and whatnot but the whole like not bowing to the press thing is just i like, why are you all here just grilling me, asking me these stupid questions, showing lack of respect, and think I'm going to respect you back by bowing to you? This is where the culture difference really shows here. Because <laughs> I'm one of those people, like, if you don't show respect to one person, what makes you think I'm going to respect you? I'm not bowing to you. What the F? He responds, wouldn't it be wrong if I changed my position? What was the result of the urine test? It came out negative. From now on, I hope the authorities will carry out an accurate and swift probe that will resolve this matter. Are you willing to accept future summons by the police to be questioned if they ask you to come? If they call me, I would have to come, no? 
Bro, what kind of question is that? These are yeah. so stupid. It's almost like, just tell us you did it. It's right? Like that kind of tone. Like, what are you talking about? Just tell us you'll never listen to the police and you don't want to cooperate. Like, what? Yeah. They what? want to make him out as the bad person. The press, like, they're crazy. In today's they part, are. did the police show you any evidence related to the allegations raised against you? No. No, they didn't. I just hope no more energy is spent on unverified matters. You were questioned for four hours. What are the areas that the police focused on? Mind your own goddamn business. Could you please repeat that? We just laughed. You, you guys laughed. That was a joke. The fact that I'm being investigated on such a matter, uh, what can I say? The police too will have to make a decision based on my testimony if my words are of help to their ongoing probe or not. What I want, if possible, is just the swift announcement of the detailed drug test lab results from my hair and fingernails. What do you expect the test results to be? Of course, it'll come out negative. Once again, I've never administered drugs or given them to anyone. A lot of people are watching. Do you have anything else you'd like to say? <sighs> yes, a lot of people are watching right now. So um, I would just say there's no need to worry too much. I hope they'll trust me and wait. Thank you. That's all. That's all. He does a very brief bow and heads back to his car. <laughs> Get out of my face. G Dragon's test results will all come back negative. And he would post on Instagram, type P Jong, which means everything will always fall back into the right pattern, almost like karma. It's used frequently in settings when someone gets accused of doing something that they didn't do. So they're being attacked, but it's almost a feeling of just wait because the truth will settle in and everyone will realize what's been happening. G-Dragon's black glasses that he wore during the public probe, the police probe, were $1,000, limited edition, and they reportedly sold out immediately after his drug test came back negative. According to dispatch, so take this how you will. But if And it's so funny how fast and citizens turn like that. Oh, he's rumored to be doing drugs. Oh my God, he's shaking so much at the airport. I knew he was a druggie, all that. Oh my God, it's just so annoying it's almost so childish how fast they're willing to jump to tear somebody down when it's not even proven and when it's proven to be negative they're like oh those glasses i need them so loud g dragon visited nami's room salon at least twice in 2023 it was something that she would allegedly not shut up about and was non-stop bragging about it allegedly she would even sneak videos of g dragon while he was going to use the restroom not in the restroom, but like okay. when he would walk up from the room and leave to go use the restroom, she would sneak videos and send it to her friends. She would text them things like, GD came to visit me again. But later to the police, Nami would state, every time GD went to the restroom, he would get up and use the restroom, G Dragon would come back looking very strange. Once I was very curious as to why, so I slipped into the bathroom and I saw some very suspicious packaging there. That's why he was called in for this probe. That is so vague. That's the end? That's the end. That's the end? That's like why he got involved in all of this. <laughs> Suspicious packaging. I don't know if that means like, like what a, does that mean? Like, like a tiny know? little clear plastic bag of white powder. I don't know what it means. It could be a Toblerone bar packaging. I don't know. Suspicious packaging. <laughs> These people are so irritating. <laughs> yeah. That is so vague and coming from someone with six prior convictions and affinity for blackmailing people for hundreds of thousands of dollars, someone that has proven to only be out for their own skin and would even exaggerate stories to their friends to appear a certain way. What validity it does she have? Founded and not credible, but the police would state that G Dragon was a drug suspect from that statement. And just to clarify, these are just allegations that he would visit Nami. We don't know if he for sure did. And even if he did go, that's not against the law. What does that have to do with drugs? But even with all of this going on, there was still an article that was posted titled Hair Removal All Over the Body. The article alleged G-Dragon shaved all his body hair and bleached his head hair, to which his attorney made another statement. G-Dragon has not removed his hair at all since it was reported that he was booked. He voluntarily submitted his hair, fingernails, and toenails to prove his innocence as quickly as possible. Again, all test results came back negative. And isn't he always in the spotlight as well? <laughs> How are you just going to come out like that? Even the National Forensic Service would confirm that G-Dragon did not dye or bleach his hair recently. But in this case, there is no such thing as innocent till proven guilty. 
It really feels like a witch hunt. Like it just For real. wanted a name. To, they to want to tear down music. somebody. But aren't you curious as to why? January of last year, I know why. there was a huge drug bust in South Korea. It was blasted all over the news. The police found a drug trafficking ring where a group of individuals were growing, using, and selling marijuana. The police were so proud of themselves. Officers are getting promoted left and right because of that drug bust. There were talks about how advanced the police were getting at tracking drug users, how competent they were becoming. But there's actually a secret behind this brilliant police bust. The police received a tip. That's it. So simple, right? So at first, the tip was from a woman who was begging the police for help to avoid her violent boyfriend. She told authorities that she overheard the boyfriend's plans to sell her into sex trafficking. The police are like, yeah, well, we don't really have time for that. First of all, he's your boyfriend. Second of all, you haven't been sold, have you? And third of all, we don't have proof that that's what he genuinely wants to do. I mean, if you don't like the idea, then just break up with him. Clearly, she couldn't do that, but they genuinely just could not care less. So the woman got smart, and the next time she called, she reported her boyfriend for dealing drugs. Suddenly, the police are all ears. They're like, this is deplorable. We got to do something about this. They're very interested in helping her and saving her from the big, bad, scary drug dealing boyfriend. They tell her to get a pen and paper and write down the list of things they want from her. Location of marijuana growing. Location of purchasing of marijuana. Location of purchasing methamphetamines. Purchasing of methamphetamines from who? Question mark. Eyewitness testimony. Sold to who and at which locations? Question mark. Not only were they just investigating a drug bust rather than her whole situation with the boyfriend, they wanted her to do the job for them. Do all the investigating. They're like, bring all that to us and then we'll look into it. What? Ooh, so exciting. Whenever she brought up the sex crimes, they just said, well, when you catch the dog, everything comes together. Like, let's just catch him and then, you know. She put her life in danger to give the police all the evidence they wanted. But even then, they waited a full month to arrest her boyfriend. She was terrified for that full month, just waiting for him to be taken in so that she wouldn't be caught snitching on him. Eventually, her boyfriend gets arrested. Their front page pieces of the police's stellar jobs on the drug bust, shining new promotions are handed down Ew. to the officers. Slimy but not even cops. Done. Some of the officers would bring the girl back in, asking her, "Did you sleep with any celebrities?" Because he was trying to like sell you to trafficking. So, like, did you sleep with any celebrities? They just wanted a celebrity attached to it because it would make it even bigger. And it all comes down to war. Violence against women is nothing. Violence against children is nothing. Police don't get a cookie for that, but they do get a cookie for winning the battles in this war against drugs. President Yoon waged war on drugs and told the police, at some point, drugs are not only devastating the health and spirit of the people of South Korea, but also destroying the dreams and hopes of the youth due to the neglect from government authorities. The government will join all forces to win the war on drugs that has eaten away our entire country. This is the current president. Right? Yeah. He's like really controversial, by the way. Now, side note, I don't think South Korea's drug usage is that bad compared to a lot of the other countries. Right. Because yeah. of um, their geographical locations, it's actually very hard to smuggle drugs into South Korea. They're strictly a drug ban country, meaning consuming any drugs without a legitimate medical reason is illegal. Even if you're a Korean citizen, you go to California where weed is legal. You smoke weed, you come back to Incheon Airport, they can drug test you for weed. Mm -hmm. If it's proven that you smoked weed in California where it's legal, but you're a Korean citizen, you're going to get arrested. Yeah. You're going to face prison time as if you smoked weed in South Korea. So to incentivize the, quote, war on drugs, President Yoon's administration stated that they would prepare large-scale rewards, including special promotions for those who show achievements in excellent cases against drugs. To simplify, the police are almost dangerously incentivized to focus on drug charges, and that's it. And they know that any big drug scandal or news will be heavily watched, heavily monitored, not just by their boss, but their bosses, 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 boss, the one that has the ability to give you a life changing promotion with a giant payday. It will be watched by the president of South Korea. There's a speculation that the police felt a lot of pressure now. They bit down on the cake way too early, and now everyone in the nation is staring at them with icing all over their face, and it's too late to back out now. It's way too embarrassing. You're talking about G-Dragon was yeah. name is clear. Now they're like, what do we do now? Yeah. Like this is embarrassing. Embarrassing. Like, we you are an and embarrassment. The way that G-Dragon handled the press conferences, it's like he's basically showing the cops that they're stupid. They are. And also just for context, for anyone who doesn't follow K-pop, G-Dragon is probably one of the biggest name in the K-pop 
industry. Yeah, he was one of like the I people like call him Gen like the OGs. Two, right? Yeah, Gen Two. So it's mm-hmm. like the OG, you know, still one of the biggest names in the country. So yeah. like but his name associated with this frontline news. Like yeah. it's crazy. Now, their investigation relied heavily on testimony and there was zero evidence to back it up. So what happened to G-Dragon was humiliating for the police. So it's likely that they wanted to make sure that Lee doesn't get away. In Nami's 17 interrogations, so Nami, the madam, would be interrogated 17 times by the police. Lee's name was mentioned 260 times. Damn. Nami would state confidently that Lee did drugs in her house. How did he administer the drugs? Where's the proof? Oh, I have a silver pipe in my house for smoking weed. When the police searched her house, they can't find the pipe anywhere. But it doesn't matter because as long as Nami is saying it happened, the police believe it happened. According to Nami, based off of no proof, no evidence, Lee would come over to her house, smoke marijuana, and take ketamine. And take all these other drugs, like hard drugs. I mean, it got to the point where Nami's third interrogation by the police, she couldn't even pinpoint exactly when Lee did the drugs, allegedly. So the police start helping her, allegedly. If Nami would list a date that didn't make sense, the police would say something along the lines of, well, on that day, that wouldn't have worked because he had a so-and-so appearance, like he was doing a press tour. So that couldn't have been then. It's most likely more so around these dates, right? Or in another time, they told Nami, well, Lee was on a business trip to the US from August 29th to September 7th. So tell us about the day that you guys did drugs between August 19th and August 29th. If I didn't know any better, I would think they're feeding her these dates. Ultimately, Nami was unable to provide the police with a set time, date, or location oh, of Lee doing drugs. Surprise! It's like they just happened in a void. How can you be a witness testimony when you don't remember the location, time, or date where anything happened? And that in her imagination, and that's yeah, valid. That's, not, that's even if you remember, that's circumstantial. Yeah, it's just like you could say whatever you want, honestly. Yeah, you had a dream. Yeah, exactly. What I was just saying. <laughs> She just imagined it. She was daydreaming one time. No matter how hard I try to be more health conscious, it just always feels very overwhelming. Being in the internet through the mobile form, making sustainable support through a program to help reach those kids who provide your own home. With best part of dot stars. October 24th, 2023, the police stated that Lee was under suspicion of inhaling and administering marijuana and other types of drugs several times. They released this to the public. So what are the public thinking? They're not thinking, oh, I bet Nami doesn't even know a set time, location, and date where this happened. They're thinking, oh, he probably, he they it, yeah. they got some stuff against him. Yeah, because the police released that, right? Yeah. Yeah. But they're not going to bring him in for questioning. This is all before they even talk to Lee and get his side of the story. They announce this and they state that their plan is to secure the cell phone data and conduct forensic work before they actually summon Lee for an interrogation. Apparently, when you cancel someone in Korea, they call it narak. It almost translates to sending someone to hell, like sending them off. It's like they're standing on the edge of a cliff and it's just the black abyss. And then someone just pushes them. You're just sending them off. Lee's agency, Hodu and You Entertainment, released a statement soon after the news broke. They stated, and this has been edited for length, first, we would like to deeply apologize for causing any concern through the reports about Lee sung yun We are currently verifying the exact facts regarding the allegations raised against the actor Lee. We intend to faithfully participate in any future investigations, including submitting cell phones for analysis. We have not yet been contacted by the police. However, actor Lee has received continuous blackmail threats from an unnamed woman, Miss A, a person related to the incident. Lee has filed a complaint with the investigative agency. We will inform you of future progress in this regard through our legal representative. We ask for your generous understanding. Lee and his agency do respond rather quickly. They even state that Lee is being blackmailed by someone involved in all of this. The general public did not care. Of course, they The statement they just don't. wasn't good enough. People compared Lee's statement to G-Dragons, and they just fully ripped it to shreds. They did not like the fact that Lee's agency did not comment directly that Lee never took the drugs and that he never went to the room salons. The public felt like a non-denial was basically admittance that he did all those things. Some comments at the time read, So who threatened you into taking drugs? Who asked you to provide an excuse to blackmail you? What kind of joke is that? You irresponsibly say, Oh, I want to enjoy the pleasure of the moment, and now you regret it? Another comment reads, This statement is the worst. I use drugs, now I'm being threatened. Are you really that pitiful? Another one is just, The end of a messy life, huh? 
To make matters worse, two very well-known names in the drug world in South Korea were linked to this case. Hwang Hana, who has been in prison like three times prior to this for drug usage, Hannah's a Nepo baby. Her grandfather founded Namyang Dairy Company, which is the country's third largest dairy company that specializes in like yakurutu, you know, the probiotic yogurt drinks. Hannah's dad is allegedly worth at least over $300 million. Hannah's a very interesting character. Her whole family is. Her family was in hot water when the dairy company made claims that their yogurt could prevent COVID. Yeah, we talked about her before, right? Yeah. Like the dairy and, princess. And her fiance mysteriously passed. Oh, right. Yes, she was involved in a very mysterious death. And like, oh, there's just a lot going on. But Hannah is notorious for getting caught with drugs, going to prison, coming out, and then being like, I'm never gonna do it again and then getting caught with drugs. And I would say that as of today, any association with Hannah probably isn't the best look. And Han so was also interrogated. Han so was associated with multiple K-pop idol drug scandals. Like I said, most notably Top from Big Bang. She was also involved in YG, like the YG of YG's trial. I mean, there's a lot going on. She's basically known by netizens as the villain of the K-pop world. That's how people describe her. And That's just like she Hannah, comes off as. any association with Han so Typically not great. Netizens are commenting, there's a saying, birds of a feather flock together. Another one reads, they live a careless life, the same kind of people hang out with one another. It's now a the small public world. is spinning together this story of how they're all connected and creating some sort of friendly drug ring together. Lee's lawyer came out to say, the third generation Tebor and the aspiring entertainer are known to be subject to an internal investigation with Lee, but Lee does not know them. And the suspicion that Lee hung out with them at an entertainment establishment and took drugs is not true. We cannot reveal more at this time, but we will talk with the investigative agency about the allegations and cooperate well with the investigation. But nobody cared. Netizens commented on the case. His image has gone down the drain. I'm just laughing thinking about how much he tried to cover up his image so far. With this, Lee had to drop out of a TV series that he was working on called No Way Out, which there's a lot going on here, but the series name is No Way Out. And in it, a really scary criminal is freed. Lee plays a police officer that has to protect citizens from the criminal, but also keep the criminal safe from the bounty hunters that are after wow. him. A How? lot of medicine saw the irony, they said, Ironic. and demanded Lee be taken off the project because they could not see him as a police officer. Some netizens commented, in the future, when producing large-scale movies, the main character should undergo drug tests before proceeding. If you're honest, there's no reason you should say no to a drug test. But if you're not, and you can't get tested, you should become a drug suspect for the police. Because of Lee's case, investors are losing millions. There are even conversations about banning celebrities from being on air if they ever have a drug scandal or investigation. Meaning any show or movie that they previously worked on would not be able to air during their scandal, or perhaps even after they would be banned from ever coming back to their careers. That's a thing, right? I thought it was a thing in China. Maybe it's a thing in Korea also. How if they are involved in some sort of scandal, then they're like wiped off the face of the internet, basically. Like all of their work is nowhere to be found. Is that maybe the same case here? What's crazy to me is that he's going to get tested. They're going to come back negative. And, and citizens just don't learn from the G-Dragon situation they don't learn okay just the bullying is just it's not even well bullied him to the point of you know um offing himself per se there's just so much to comment about and this isn't just prevalent in korea it can happen everywhere okay there's always going to be some corrupt dirty slimy cops there's going to be just dirty, slimy people, rats congregating together. They just run in the same circles. They always tend to infiltrate somewhere and just ruin everyone's lives just for the fun of it, just to be chaotic, just to see the world burn on, just burn behind them. So just being a celebrity in South Korea is just has to be one of the most I, irritating, annoying, stressful, anxious, anything along those lines, any synonyms come like that. It's just a tough, 
Such which the logic of that is insane. People who commit acts of violence or other crimes while under the influence is another thing. But people who are just caught using drugs, I've never met someone who is dependent on drugs that wasn't hurting a lot inside. So great idea. Let's just make sure that these people don't have jobs to come back to. That's perfect because that should really teach them a lesson to not do drugs. Meanwhile, Cho Dusun can open up a coffee shop in the mountains if he wants to and live next to playgrounds and be in the same town as his victim. Like, make it make sense. October 28th, 2023, Lee goes in for his first <laughs> interrogation. When he leaves the police station, the press and the public are waiting for him. As he addresses the media, he gives them a deep bow as a show of deep apology, and he bursts into tears. And he apologizes for causing such an inconvenience for everyone. But he does deny taking any drugs. He apologizes to his family and says, I apologize to them as they are suffering and going through very hard times. He continues, and above all, I would like to bow down once again to everyone who has trusted and supported me so far. It's so sad that he has to, he feels the need to apologize like this. The comparison between G-Dragon and um, Lee is just two different worlds. Like, it could be an age thing also, because... Uh, as an age thing, I would side more with G-Dragon's actions as well. But um, to feel the need to apologize because your name is like mentioned in a potential um, drug use with no no proof is just wild. <laughs> After his first interrogation, Lee's urine test came back negative for drugs. The police would call in Lee to do another drug test. This time, instead of a urine test, they wanted to take a hundred strands of his hair. Uh. They tested every section of every strand of the 100 hairs, and the results came back negative. Oh, it's surprise. It's a very thorough test. It stated that Lee did not use drugs for approximately eight to 10 months. This is in like October, November. Remember the timeline? The police were like, August, right? You guys did drugs in August. It would mm. most definitely show up in his hair test. Yeah. I mean, sure, he could maybe, you could argue, maybe he did drugs 11 months ago, two years ago, but that's not evidence. He took the test in November, and just going off Nami's testimony, she stated they did drugs in August. It would have absolutely shown up on the drug test. Yeah, so she's lying. Yes. So this should be... Over. Uh, yeah. And the police, honestly, I feel like they could come out and say, she lied. And we fucked up. Yeah. So let's move on. My apologies. Let's move it, keep it moving. Why would the they ever apologize? More drug tests from Lee. They took his leg hair and his armpit hair to be tested. His leg hair came back untestable, which it just means that a lot of Asians don't have really thick hair follicles on their legs. Mm. So there's not a lot to test for the drugs. It's just too thin of hair. Mm. But the way that it was worded in the press made it seem like, ooh, the results are iffy. Like they couldn't wow. determine. It was less of like, oh yeah, it's, you know, because his hair wasn't enough. Or some people ran with it and said, maybe he like thinned out the hair on his legs. Maybe he shaved his legs. His armpit hair was thick enough and the results would come back negative. The same day Lee's test results all came back negative and the results would be publicized to the public. I mean, this is a huge day. This is the day that he's been waiting for because he's proved himself. He's innocent. He can look the public in the eye. He can be just like G-Dragon and take his career back. I mean, he's traumatized. There's going to be so many emotional scars. He will never get back this type of everything that's happened to him, but he can get his life back together. But none of the media outlets really reported on the negative drug test. The press up until this point had been so all over this case that if Lee so much as breathed, there'd be like a hundred new articles on it. Suddenly, they're not intrigued by the negative drug test results. Mm -mm. They're too busy talking about his newly leaked phone conversation. The same day his hair test results came back negative, the press did not report on it. They were writing about a KBS released phone call, a leaked call of a recording of Lee and the madam of the room salon, Nami, where Lee can be heard telling her, 
I like you a lot too. You know that, right? And she responds, I don't know, since you never express it. His negative drug results were made public, but who cares about drugs when you have an A-list married actor confessing his love to a mistress who runs a salacious establishment and you have the audio to go along with it. Side note, where do you think KBS got that audio? Just wondering. I don't know. It's a big well, mystery. Like, who would have that audio? Nami would Scooby have that Doo. audio. Who's working with the police? I'm just saying. Oh, you're saying police leaked it? A lot of netizens believe that police were involved in leaking a lot of information oh, for this case. Like how they leaked Lee's name in the beginning of this so that they could get a lot of publicity and that they could make this a big blown thing and get cats <sighs> on the back once they solved it. And now, once the drug tests come back negative, maybe it's time to divert attention, allegedly. This is a speculation online. Everyone went crazy because you have to remember that Lee's wife is also a famous person. They brought up old interviews of his wife talking about how she put her career on the back burner so that he could go full force into his dreams. She said, you go out and drink and do what you will. She's like talking about her husband in an interview. But I have to focus on the family to the point where sometimes I even forget my name. And this is on a show called Healing Camp, where a lot of celebrities will come and they just try to be as vulnerable as possible. So this is not her going on an interview and be like, my husband, like they're just trying to really dig deep and have these hard conversations with each other on this show. Mm -hmm. She said, sometimes I even forget my own name. I forget that I too was an actress. That's why sometimes I think of my husband as my third son. Other times she joked that she had four sons. She has her husband, Lee, their actual two sons, and their boy dog. Netizens' comments were flooded with, isn't he embarrassed for his children? What was he thinking doing drugs with a woman at an adult establishment when he had his family and his career? Others hated the fact that his wife had ran from his Korea and she was extremely well-respected in the theater world and incredibly skilled in her profession. She was a dedicated wife and mother, yet he still cheated? A lot of people pointed out the fact that his wife was slowly starting to get more involved in her career now that her kids were getting older. They called it her second golden age. She's always been active, but more so now. But now with Lee's scandal, she's losing brand ambassadorships. People don't want to work with her, even for casting. People are so hesitant to work with her, even though she's not suspected of doing anything, because it's just a lot of baggage that's going to be attached to the show now. All the press is going to be about like, oh, she's starring in it. What's her husband doing? They also lost a lot of brand deals together because people really liked them as a family unit. So one of their biggest brand deals was with SK Telecom and to promote a kid-friendly educational service on TV. They were quickly dropped. The controversy got so intense, the police sent both of their sons to the U.S. to get away from the media attention. News reports started coming out that Lee was part of the top 1% of VIPs at a room salon. But in reality, he was allegedly just a guest at a room salon club dubbed as a 1% club. So like, it's like a play on words, like, oh, he's top 1%, almost indicating he's there all the time. What is he doing there all the time? And again, I have nothing to say about the timing about all of this, but if I did have something to say, I would probably say there are no such things as coincidences. G-Dragon was accused of doing drugs based off of Nami's testimony. He was paraded around in the media, dragged through the mud. He almost lost his career. At one point, he was facing over $38 million in penalty fees for breaking brand ambassadorship deals because of this scandal. His life was about to be over. The police were basically barking to the whole nation that G-Dragon was the bad guy and they're going to get him. Then all of his drug tests come back negative. The public start to question if maybe the investigation had been excessive. The police feel like they've been caught with their fists in their mouths. So now with Lee, they're even more desperate. They have to do something to redeem their image. And yet, even with all these negative drug tests, Lee was called in for his third police questioning. And each time it was a press circus. Each time he had to stand in front of all these journalists that were actively digging up every single bad thing that he did from his past and twisting it in just really gross ways. He would have to apologize for something that he wasn't even proven guilty of doing yet. And December 23rd, 2023, so a few months ago, Lee walked into the police station for his third questioning. He would not walk back out for 19 hours. He walked in at 10 a.m. and would not walk out until 5 a.m. the next day. It's snowing outside. It's freezing. He's wearing a black coat and a scarf. He bows to the press, and the first thing he says are, first of all, I'm sincerely sorry to have the reporters wait because it ended so late today with the investigation. 
Why his is... statement to the press after his third and last interrogation was, I did my best to cooperate today. Now I ask the police to carefully determine which side of the statement is credible between me and the blackmailers. Once again, I'm sorry to keep you guys all waiting this late. I mean, there's so much wrong with this. Every, In South Korea, so you're much. not allowed to interrogate someone between 9 p.m. to 6 a.m. to safeguard their human rights. But the police stated that they received consent from Lee, so they're fine. The police argued, but he consented. But, like, I don't think he really had a choice here. Yeah. Can you imagine if you yeah. reject that? Can you yeah. imagine? That would be, like, career death instantly. Yeah. Yeah. But there's a reason that it's not advised that police conduct long investigations. It's stated on average, people who falsely confessed to crimes that they did not commit were interrogated for around 16.9 hours before they admitted to that crime. That's typically the threshold. Also, side note, but not really because this is so strange, but they made him take mug shots every time he came in for an interrogation. They also refused to let him use the underground parking lot when coming in. Usually high profile people are allowed because you don't want too much of a media circus for the integrity of the investigation and for the safety of the parties involved. But no, the police wanted it as public as possible. They basically wanted him to have a perp walk. And when the police were questioned, why 19 hours? Like, yeah, okay, so right? why he consented, but why 19? You know what I hate? I hate that they can just say police. I we, wish there's like names like, okay, this is the man in charge who made these decisions because these are, you're talking about some very, very, very life altering decisions. decisions that you're making right now. Like making someone park outside versus parking underground. Like, you know what this is going to do to someone. Like, imagine that's you. Like, what's, what, what is that going to impact you and your families forever? Yeah. I I'm glad you mentioned that because I was just thinking that also. I was like, who is the police? Just general police. You all work as like one person. There's not a person that's like in charge. Even big companies don't get canceled for doing some of the most heinous stuff because there's not a face, there's not a name. They're like hidden behind this entity of a group of people and it's just so vague. Same with this case. It's like the police, right? But yeah, these someone's are some... making the call. Yeah. Someone's sitting there like, I'm going to get a promotion. Yeah. They did get a promotion. Ugh. The police stated the interrogation was going to last so long because they were also investigating his, his extortion claims. It's not just because he's a drug suspect. They're also trying to help him. Duh. But it was later uncovered that out of the 19 hours, they only spent one and a half hours on his complaint that he was being blackmailed. After 19 hours of being interrogated, Lee admitted he might have taken drugs, but by complete accident. He stated there was a situation where he was having trouble sleeping, and Nami said that she had a sleeping pill that she could let him have. But she said, no, don't ingest it. It's not going to work quickly enough. It works better and faster if you snort it. So he stated that she instructed him to snort it through a straw. He doesn't know if this was a drug or not. He genuinely thought it was a sleeping pill. Now, think about how strange this is. 19 hour interrogation lee is in the clear at this point he's got all negative drug tests so far but suddenly after a 19 hour interrogation even though the science and the drug tests state otherwise lee is admitting to doing drugs at least in some capacity they are grasping at straws almost immediately after the third interrogation lee's attorney stated this was completely unjust and they demanded a lie detector test for lee now this is not his attorney saying this, but netizens have kind of put this together. First of all, we don't know if the snorting of a sleeping pill through a straw incident even happened or if he was pressured to say that it happened by the police. So if Lee lied and was pressured to say it, if that's the case, he's innocent. Second, even if it did happen, could it have been just really sleeping pills that he snorted because Lee's drug test all came back clean? So if that's the case, he's innocent. Third, Lee might have just been trying to be overly helpful with the police. He yeah. might have felt like honesty is the best choice here, and he yes. assumed that if he was honest with the police, they would help him find justice. Yeah, because there's no reason for him to confess to yeah. anything right now. What, what exactly, he because he's in the clear, right? Yeah. Which in that case, he's innocent. Fourth, Lee told the truth. He thought it was sleeping pills. It turned out not to be. If that's the case, how did it not show up on the drug test? But also, he's innocent because he was drugged. Yeah. Now, fifth, if Lee didn't tell the truth, he knew that he snorted a recreational drug, but he was trying to play it off. That just doesn't make sense because his drug test came back negative. Why would he ever tell the truth now if that's what really happened? Yeah. Like he's clear. Why would he screw himself over the last minute? Yeah. Like this is anybody with brain cell will come to this conclusion. Like this makes no sense. Apparently exactly. no one has a like, working no brain sense. cell. And even if he said that and was not forced to say that, 
everything leads to he's innocent. Yeah. He's innocent. Like, I don't know what to say. He's innocent. Yeah. His attorney stated, if Nami was telling the truth, the drug test should have come back positive, but they came back negative. Lee is finding himself in an extremely unfair situation. A lie detector test should be conducted on both of them to verify who is speaking truthfully. Allegedly, the police officer interrogating Lee was calling Nami the blackmailer by her first name, but in a very casual way. You would never really hear that in a professional setting. It just sounded too friendly, too casual in Korean verbiage, almost hinting at some sort of friendliness or even report built with Nami. Then there was backlash. The police just stated, we investigated fairly according to the law and principles. So he gets released from his 19-hour interrogation and 24 hours right after... Before Lee's death, two more phone calls were leaked. So one between Nami, the middle blackmailer, and Lee's friend, Mr. Kim, and the other between Nami and Lee. Both phone calls take place when Nami is trying to get $250,000. Now, the first phone call with Mr. Kim, the friend, Nami's talking about how she thinks someone bugged her house through her house plants. And side note, I've heavily, heavily shortened these. Nami just rambles like the whole conversation. So Mr. Kim asks, what do you mean they have a recording file on you? I think they planted something in my house. What? I think they planted something in my house. By the way, Lee has been in and out of my house a lot, and I think the blackmailer knows way too much about the dates and the information about my house. About about what? Just personal conversations. You know, I had a deep relationship with Lee. Anyway, there were things like physical relationships with Lee, you know? Yeah. But I'm not really on the same team as the hacker, and I'm fine as long as I get arrested. Shouldn't we save Lee, though? I want to die. But what do we do about this? What do the blackmailers want exactly? Money. How much? 250K. Huh? 250K. I mean, there's no end to that though. Even if we pay for it anyway, it's just going to keep going. No, no, no. But I know this guy. I don't care if, if I am poor, I'm going to protect Lee. Lee is okay. There is nothing else. Like Lee didn't take drugs or anything. No, Lee did drugs. What? Lee did drugs with me. Who? Opa, Lee did drugs with me. He did what with you? Uh, it, he's, he would be drunk and then he would come out of nowhere and he'd have nowhere to go. And then, you know, he'd wake up at my house and I would try to get him to wake up. He wouldn't wake up. He had to go sign some contract with his wife and his manager came to my house and his wife called me like 60 times. He still didn't go home. I don't know, okay? I only what? met married men, so I don't know them well, but I think Opa has not cheated before much. That's why he likes to drink and he drinks and he doesn't know where to go. Wait, wait, so what kind of meds did he take? Ketamine and marijuana. I have a pro athlete friend who is doing a doping test right now. It's very accurate. So I did one yesterday and I knew that there was a lot of cannabis in my body, but Leopo was drunk and he asked me, do you guys have meds? Do you guys have drugs? So I gave it to him out of curiosity. Yeah, we met a little bit deeper than you thought. He often drinks at home and then doesn't have a place to go. So he would ask to come here and then he would keep asking for some drugs. He'd be like, do you have drugs? And then I would give him Viagra. Anyway, I tried the doping test and it's really accurate. Like you can even tell what kind of diet that you have. Oh my God. Look, Opa, I can go to prison because it's my fault, but shouldn't we try to protect Lee? Why does she keep saying that? Right. Yeah. It's so manipulative. If someone is recording in your home right now, then that means you know them. <gasps> Hwang Hana, the milk chebal. But I never did drugs with her, I swear. But somehow I got involved. Listen, if we don't prepare the $250,000 by Wednesday, they're going to leak it to the media. So you're saying that your drug tests come back and there's no drugs in your system? No, no drugs in my system. Then Lee would not have drugs in his system. It's in his hair. Oh, it's in his hair. But you said you didn't have any though. I bleached my hair seven times, and I also didn't do drugs that many times. The conversation is just really bizarre. Some netizens Very. feel like it confirms Lee wasn't doing drugs, because even his close friend Mr. Kim seems surprised at the mention that he does drugs, and Nami keeps telling him that he's doing drugs. Like, it's just kind of weird. It's like she's trying to gaslight him into thinking that Lee does drugs. Now, the second phone conversation that was leaked between Lee and Nami, he's at golf practice and Nami's just acting incredibly stressed. Lee already knows about the blackmailer and the hacking and all of that, but she's just trying to talk in circles and get more money out of him. She wants $250,000. And at a lot of parts in the conversation, Lee sounds like he's really doubting her whole story about being hacked. She says she's like hacked multiple times. Her phone was robbed. It's just a lot. And now here's what's interesting. In this phone conversation with Lee, she doesn't bring up the fact that they did drugs. She's not like, remember, you would come over when you're drunk and then you'd be like, do you have pills? 
she would just cryptically say things like, you did something with me because you were drunk. And Lee sounds confused. She's like, what? She keeps mentioning and hinting at the hacker and like they need the money because there might be drugs in his like, like just hinting at it, never really says it. Yeah, see, that's like, she trying to gaslight him yeah. now. Like, like almost like you don't remember because you were drunk. Yeah. Nami just spends the whole conversation trying to convince him to give her the 250k for the blackmailer. And side note, another thing that makes this whole thing so much more sad is one text message sent by Nami to Lee. A lot of netizens think that this proves that he didn't do drugs. This is when she's trying to convince him to give her the blackmail money. She texts him, Oppa, just tell me yes or no for the money. It's so simple. I get you're tired, but right now my life is paralyzing. I didn't know that people around me that were near me were so evil. Ugh. When that fuck your name my heart started racing even the simple fact that you will know that i did drugs is so embarrassing so i just wanted to hide it that's why i just told you to just leave oh uh, she's saying that you will be embarrassed of me doing drugs yeah like i would be so embarrassed if you found out that i did drugs yeah that because means he probably doesn't like drugs yeah he probably doesn't yeah. do drugs otherwise you'd be like you do drugs that's fine me too exactly it's very interesting. Very. Now, these phone calls were released just a day before oh Lee's death, and I felt like it was more favorable to him. It proved that he was being blackmailed. Other than the conversation with Mr. Kim, which is just, again, Nami talking about Lee doing drugs, providing zero evidence, there's nothing, like really nothing. But the media, the public, they did not care. They used these phone call leaks to further their narrative that Lee was absolutely guilty of drugs. Maybe that, like they're talking about drug tests, so maybe he found a way to hack the drug test. One comment reads, one of the reasons why drugs are so rampant in our country is because the punishment is weak. Similar to China, we should impose life imprisonment or the death penalty. For drugs? The same day the phone calls were released, 24 hours before Lee's death, the government announced a whole group of promotions for police officers, including some investigators working directly on Lee's case. They were being promoted. December 27th, 2023, around 10, 12 a.m., Lee's manager went to stop by his place because he hasn't been able to get in contact with Lee all night. He was starting to get nervous. He let himself in and saw that Lee was not there. There was just a letter that resembled a will left in the house. The letter allegedly states something along the lines of, I'm sorry, there's nothing we can do. There's no other way. He immediately calls the police and they find Lee Sung Yoon dead in his car. Parked near Waryong Park, there was a coal briquette found in the passenger seat. He died of carbon monoxide poisoning. He was gone. It was stated by netizens, Lee Sung Yoon was not just a suspect in the drug case, but a victim in the extortion case. However, for 71 days, he was treated as a criminal. There's a saying in Korea that is, um, when I do it, it's romance. When you do it, it's a sin. It usually applies for cheating. When you are the cheater, you romanticize it. You have all these reasonings behind why you did it. But then when someone else does it, you read about it on the news or you hear your neighbor cheated or your wife cheats. They're despicable sinners and they deserve every bad, horrendous consequence that comes their way. And again, I'm not defending cheating, but cheating is maybe the only thing that we can assume Lee did. And even that, we don't know the pure extent of that. While it's bad, does he really need to lose his career because of it? It's a conversation for him and his family and for them to decide how to proceed. It's sad, it might make him lose fans because they thought he's a great family man and this shatters their vision of him, but that's like the full extent. Right, that's I was like thinking that thought process also. I just wasn't sure how to word it and it could potentially come off really controversial, but I'm glad she worded it the way that she did. Like As bad as it should get. That's what I was thinking. But no, he was never proven guilty of anything. Even his death was leaked to the press. 13 minutes before Chosun TV exclusively reported the news at 11 a.m., a post went up on an online forum that read, it looks like after Lee Sung Yoon has died. The first few comments were before 11 a.m. and they were really confused. They read, I'm glad this is just clickbait. Hey, don't play with people's lives like that. Well, there hasn't been a single article, so what is this bullshit? When the official news came out 13 minutes later, netizens started going back to that post and asking, why are there so many leaks in this investigation? Who put this post up? Lee was actually known for his voice. He didn't really like it, apparently, much in the beginning. Some people describe it as being stuffy. Other people, so I asked my mom, and my mom says it's like very dongle dongle, which is like very round. It almost is like a round sound that rolls around in a cave. Other describe it to be very thick, like honey. But it's kind of his charisma when he acts. But it's also the reason why his acting is so 
good. It's harder for him to show a very strong wide range of emotions clearly through his voice. He's able to do it so well. It just takes so much more effort. It's kind of incredible how many characters he's fit his voice into and his life into. He's played such a diverse role of characters throughout his career. People said he's got this unique talent. He just is able to dial in his aura so subtly. It's like he can control how much of him is actually in this character and how much isn't, how much he's pulling from himself. And it's, it's like the perfect amount each time. One director said, I think the job of an actor is to store up everything he has experienced and feel with his whole body and bring it out in front of the camera and dedicate your life to it. And Lee did that with every performance. But it took a while for audiences to warm up to him. And once they did, I mean, he just kind of exploded. I think for like seven years, though, nobody knew who this guy was. He worked so hard. He became an A-list actor. And even before that, before he was well up, before he was making good money, a lot of directors just remember how dedicated he was. There was one director who <laughs> signed Lee for the role of the movie. And the director's like, I'm just letting you know now, this budget is non-existent. So when we have a scene with multi-camera angles where you need five different angles in one shot, I only have one camera. So you're gonna have to sit there and redo the same scene while I move around into the five different <laughs> angles, okay? And he's like, that's fine. Like he never complained. He was described as being the A-list actor, even when he made it, to show up to these tiny events that his friends were hosting while all of his peers are like, well, I can't go because the appearance fee and this and that. He would just show up for free. And even before he made it, before he had money, he would get all of his junior actors and co-stars together and he would buy all their meals. He would also, this is when he barely has a job. Like he's got, he, maybe he booked one role. He doesn't have the next one lined up, but he would bring one of his junior friends over, just started. And he would go to the director, director, I'm telling you this guy, you got to book him for your next movie. Give him a chance, please. Like he's so good. He's trying to give his friends roles when he hasn't even secured a role for himself. One director called him a treasure trove of actors because every day he would pitch you a new up and coming actor that didn't have a chance. And he'd be like, I'm telling you, this is the one. And then he met his wife. Well, he didn't really meet her. He saw her in a movie. And then he asked a friend of his to be like, please, can you just let me meet her in person one time? You guys are in the same agency. That's it just once. So they meet. And they talked for 15 minutes and he had to go because he had to go film and he begged her for her number. And ever since then, I mean, I would say in hindsight, watching interviews of the couple, it doesn't feel like they have the perfect relationship, but it does seem like they have a lot of love and adoration for each other, but almost a lot of almost even fun. In an interview, when Lee's wife was asked about what Lee likes the most, she said, ah, that's so easy. He loves Taranda, like you did good. I'm so proud of you. You're doing good. Like, wow, that's crazy. You did good. He loves that. She explains, and she's talking to Lee in this interview. You always say that you're not enough and that it's all luck or you were just picked or that the universe lined up. But no, I think it's just talent. In another part of the interview, his wife tells him, I love you. So stop trying to verify and test my love. And he just starts bust out laughing. And then she goes on to rant about him using 20 pots every time he makes a single meal. She says, just because you played a chef one time on a show does not mean you're a chef. The food's not even good and you use 20 <laughs> pots, okay? The two dated for seven years before getting married and having two sons. And Lee talked about the birth of his first son and he said it was so emotional. He said when he was born, it was such an emotional moment. And then out of nowhere, the nurse asks me to sing. And I'm like, what? what? I'm crying, I start singing and then I just start sobbing. <laughs> and there's just so many times you can see how much he loves his kids. There was one variety show that he was on where he would travel through Europe on a train with a bunch of other celebrities. And he would periodically call his family and show them the scenery. But he's such a dad when he does it. Like you would never think that this guy was on stage to win an Academy Award. He doesn't know how to flip. He's there in like basketball shorts, hoodies and flip flops. He's trying to show his sons where he's sleeping on the train, but he doesn't know how to flip the camera over. So he's just like, like trying to get the angle nonstop. He's just awkwardly trying to show them. Afterwards, his wife is like, why do you look like that? Why is your face so bloated? He's like, yeah, I'm tired. And then she'd be like, okay, show me the train. Show the kids the train. Then you'd go back to showing the train. 
December 29th, 2023, just two days after his death, his family held a private funeral. Lee's two sons flew back into Korea, and it is Korean tradition that your loved one or your family member has to carry your funeral photo, a portrait of you, uh -huh. in front of you as your loved ones carry your coffin to the hearse, to the car. My dad did this when my grandfather passed away, and he said it was probably the heaviest thing that he's ever carried. But my dad was a full-grown man when his dad passed. Uh, both of Lee's sons were really young, 14 and 12. There were also post-it notes left behind by fans at the funeral, and they read, Rest comfortably now, and goodbye, my Ajishi. I love you forever. At the SBS Drama Awards that was hosted that very night of his funeral, everyone came, but netizens said there was a shift in the air. There was almost this contained, controlled anger running through everyone there. Anger and sadness. Paza had rehearsed two of her new biggest songs, Chili and I Love My Body, but in a single day, she changed her entire set and outfit, and she sang her song, LMM, dedicated to Lee. The song is about breaking free and trying to face adversity and still have hope. The lyrics go, like, sorry. It's gonna end, the sun sets into the long darkness. It feels like we're gonna get thrown away. Even if we try to make more, we're still just hanging around the same place. But flowers bloom even in the falling rain. One of Lee's friends won an award and he had just spent the earlier part of the day at Lee's funeral. And now he's at this award ceremony and he went up on stage and he said, today is the day that I sent my brother to heaven. And today is also the day that I won this award. So I dedicate this to you in heaven who has always been very serious about acting. Oh, now, it was very quick for the police to be able to track SJ as the main blackmailer. SJ was not that tech savvy. She wasn't hidden well. I mean, she was arrested the day after Lee's death on December 28th, 2023. And this part really angered a lot of netizens, but she showed up to the police station in a big black puffer jacket hat, holding a two-year-old baby in her arms. So you remember how Nami is called a flower serpent, like a flower snake? Uh -huh. SJ is known by the people around her as the grass snake because she loved golf, but she didn't even love golf. She just loved going to golf clubs and looking for rich men to blackmail. Yeah, that's all she did. She would go on these apps, find rich married men, go to the golf course, find rich married men, sleep with them, and then she would extort them for money. More often than not, like I said, they're married. This is kind of her type for a reason. She would meet with them, sleep with them, and then say, Opa, I'm pregnant. So just imagine her calling up like 10 guys allegedly to state, I'm pregnant and it's your child, but I'm reasonable. I don't want a child. I don't want to break up your marriage. So let's terminate. But I need money to do that. The men would happily hand over the money. But a few days later, they would get another phone call. SJ sounds emotional. She sounds scared. They said, I have a condition that makes the termination process so much more complicated. They say it's going to cost a lot more. How much more? About $8,000 more. The men typically already came this far. There's no going back. So they would send her the money. And usually this is where her scam would end until January, 2023, she actually ends up having a baby. She's actually pregnant. So she decides to expand her scam. She went from, oh no, I'm pregnant, send me money to terminate. Oh no, they said I have a rare condition, so it's gonna cost a lot more to, oh well, oopsie, they actually told me my condition is uterine fibroid cancer. So I will die if I don't have the baby. Anyway, I gave birth and it's yours. It's your baby, so pay me child support. At one point, she was collecting child support for five different men for one child, a child that she didn't even want to take care of. It's alleged that SJ would get so excited to party that she would just drop her baby off at random people's houses and leave. She would not come back for days to get that baby. She was, she was just so 
bizarre. Like everything about this was bizarre. And a lot of netizens felt like the craziest aspect about this case in terms of SJ was, I mean, all of this was for a Porsche. Not really, but kind of. She really wanted a Porsche Taycan, Taycan. Yeah, SJ wanted to scam people and blackmail Nami so that she could just drive nice cars. It's not like she was in desperate need of money to survive. SJ's dad is actually quite wealthy. He owns a big wild ginseng distribution business. And in a lot of Asian countries, ginseng can be upwards of like $1,500 a pound during high seasons. He bought her the apartment that she lives in. He bought her a luxury SUV to drive. He told her, these are your necessities. Anything outside of that, you're going to have to earn because you're in your late 20s. And it'd be so easy. He even offered her a job at his business where she could get paid $10,000 a month if she worked hard. It was not enough for her. It's likely that SJ brought the baby into the police station to get sympathy from the press and the police. It kind of backfired. She ends up getting charged on child abuse on top of her fraud and blackmail charges. And Stupid. Yeah. In addition, a plastic surgeon named Dr. L was also arrested for suspicion of supplying Nami and all these other people at the bar or the salon with drugs. The most infuriating part of all of this is that SJ and Nami's identities were being protected by the police. They were actually released by YouTubers, which is very complicated because on one hand, I don't know if YouTubers should be the ones releasing people's personal they information shouldn't. like that, because what if they get it wrong? Who are they to make that decision, I guess? But at the same time, why do these people have the privilege of hiding their faces? Exactly. Like if nobody is innocent until proven guilty, then nobody is innocent until proven guilty across the board. And again, another infuriating thing is Nami, even the madam of the room salon, had a lot of luxury items. She had bags that were worth like twenty to $30,000 a bag. She had a Cartier Benoit watch, like very expensive things. And again, nothing excuses blackmail. But these women, they didn't even need money to put food on the table or feed their kids. They did it for luxury items. A professor of criminal law said about the investigation, the interrogation should have stopped at the second drug test. They both resulted in negatives. However, because of the media and press attention, the police felt pressure to find a criminal. Maybe they felt like they had to keep trying. It's like they were forced onto a train that they couldn't stop. But the police disagree. The day after Lee's death, the Incheon National Police Agency held a press conference where the police commissioner general, one of the highest ranks said, anyway, it's a really unfortunate choice. And I personally really like Lee. He's talking about the choice being Lee's, not the choice that the police is police. Oh, makes. really? What? Unfortunate choice. Unfortunate choice. And I personally really choice. like Lee, but I don't agree with this as, you know, did the police investigation go wrong? It would be difficult for us to handle such an investigation if we continue to conduct it behind closed doors. Don't you guys want to know the truth? Do you tolerate it when we investigate it with a private interrogation? So he's throwing the blame back at the public and the press, stating they would have been upset if they kept the investigation quiet. What? The CEO of the Korean Film Producers Union said, the police commissioner basically just said, what? You guys wanted this. Why are you doing this to me and getting mad when you're accomplices in all of this? The police general continued, I cannot agree with the allegations of a time-consuming investigation. The period of investigation into Mr. Lee is the time it normally takes to conduct a drug investigation. And unlike G-Dragon, who was cleared of charges, we decided that further investigation was necessary, so we summoned him once more. To the very end, it seems like they will take zero responsibility. One netizen wrote, the Korean police never really cared about the extortion case because they thought they were going to bag a high profile celeb on drugs. Two high profile celebs, actually, neither of whom actually took any drugs. It seems like they're only interested now because they need to have something to show for this pathetically inept investigation, if you can even call it that. Another commented, I still don't understand at all why they took her word for it and persisted in trying to get Lee to be tested for drugs when it was clear many weeks ago that she was lying. Why did they turn to bullying him, a 19 hour interrogation that even his lawyer came out and said was confrontational? It must have been horrific for his lawyer to say that. And to demand a polygraph test? He knew he wasn't gonna be believed by anyone. Then the media came out with this sleeping pill straw story. The police and the media conspired to set up a lynch mob and netizens delivered. Police corruption at its finest. That's what the comment reads. For Korean celebrities, even being questioned and cooperating with the police, which are typically seen as traits of a good civilian, someone who is willing to talk to the police and let them investigate, they get treated like criminals instead. Mm -hmm. It just ruins their reputation regardless of if they actually committed a crime or not. My dad said it actually went so beyond that. I was talking to my parents about it. And my dad was saying the clips of him being brought in to be questioned were played over and over and over again on all the news networks, nonstop. My dad's a huge news watcher, just nonstop, 
not, no news would develop and they would just play that clip over and over and over and over and over again. Every day, nonstop. He wasn't even guilty and he was being paraded around like some sort of criminal, like a circus criminal. Even Samuel, the guy that reported Nami to the police alongside SJ said he regretted getting the police involved. He thought, first of all, I didn't even know celebrities were involved. I mean, involved, quote, involved. He thought he was just reporting Nami. And he said that he was so shocked because the person who did so many drugs and spread drugs to others is sitting right there. But they're like going after celebrities who didn't do anything. They're just bombarding them. It's like the, the criminal is sitting right in front of you. What are you talking about? One that is instated, someone who had a long life ahead of them died. And that blood is on a lot of people's hands. The blackmailers, the police, the press, and us, the public. Who do you believe is the most at fault? The two women that blackmailed him and lit the torch or the police that grabbed that torch from them and lit Lee's house on fire or the press that made sure that the whole world saw Lee's burning house every second of every day or the netizens that came to throw gasoline into the house from outside. They are all linking the arms together. the trigger point was the timing of all the leaked phone calls being released. The leaked phone call where he tells his mistress he likes her. I mean, the timing of that to overshadow his negative test results it's just really bizarre. And also, what was the purpose? It's a private conversation between two parties, which, yeah, it's not the best look for him, but it's not illegal. So why is that worthy of a leak? Why is that more newsworthy? Netizens have stated at the very, very least, this is personality murder, reputation murder. One netizen asked, is Korea one of those hyper anti-drug countries? Is that why? And someone responded, yeah, but don't worry. They make up for it by being the country with the highest alcohol consumption in the world. G Dragon posted a black screen with a white chrysanthemum on the day of Lee's funeral. He did not explicitly state why, but it's widely known in Korea that white chrysanthemums are reserved for mourning and grief. One netizen commented, regardless of what you think of G Dragon, G Dragon can relate with Lee. I mean, he was left alone by the company that helped raise him to the top. Silence amongst industry friends, police pushing a hidden agenda, YouTubers, TikTokers, all going nuts, analyzing his speech patterns, his walks, his body language, preparing him up as some sort of grand lamb sacrifice alongside poor Lee sung -yun. And worst of all, they'll do it again to someone else sooner or later. In one of Lee's most iconic shows that he was in, it's called My Mister, there's a famous line in the ending scene where Lee goes, Tian, are you at peace now? What are your thoughts on this case? Let me know in the comments. I will see you guys on Sunday for the next episode. Stay safe. Bye. I pretty much already kind of said my thoughts throughout. It's just a really, really, really sad and unjust case. And everything was just, the way everything was handled, the way everything was played out, like, I was never really, I don't want to get super controversial or super into it because, once again, it's not my culture. I know a lot of Native Koreans aren't a fan of this law also, but I've just never liked the whole being able to mask your identity as a criminal, not only is masking their identity by like respecting their privacy and whatnot, it's the lesser punishment, the less sentencing for the crimes that they commit. The whole thing is just so heartbreaking and it's just so infuriating. Like I mentioned, um, she kind of brought it up a little bit, like who's at fault here, so, so, and so. Like I mentioned it a little early on, how crazy it would be because these two girls are bullying him essentially and not just them it's the police because there's going to be slimy greasy police everywhere and not even the police at that it's also going to be end citizens as well who are just going to take this little crumb and just just take these untrustworthy people's words they're just going to take their word as fact and just yeah no proof but it's just their word these I think there's just so many things that need to be changed. <laughs> I mean, as an outsider looking in, it's just such a cruel, cruel world for essentially the innocent people, the innocent law-abiding citizens versus just the criminals. It's just so...
I can just rant on and on and on about this. So I'm probably just going to stop it here. Thank you so much for hanging out with me if you did. I hope you have a beautiful day, May night, whenever you're watching this video. And I will catch you on the next one. Goodbye.